Hi everyone, my name is King Ivy and this is SAS Statistics. This is the sixth lesson of a series of, of lesson sets. And in today's lesson, we'll be covering predictive models and scoring. If you haven't checked out the previous five lessons, I recommend that you watch the entire playlist before you watch this video, just because we'll be going over and leveraging some of the knowledge that we have obtained previously. So here, I've already written out the code, uh, just because it's a little bit more of a difficult thing to code on the fly. So I've written it out and I'm just going to go and explain it. This first component, really you don't need to do in most most cases when you're actually developing the model. But what I'm doing here is I'm actually splitting this sashelp.cars data set into two different data sets. One is I'm going to be using to help train and develop the model and as well to validate it. Another one I'm going to be using to later on to apply the scoring code into this into this data set. So let's go ahead and, and uh, explain what this is. So this proc uh, survey select it takes from this sas help cars as I explained earlier it's going to output it this this data set called split and the sample rate is going to be 0.5 which means half the data is going to have a value of one the other half is going to have a value of zero so if I go to here you'll see here some of this already developed previously that in this left hand column there's going to be a series of ones and zeros and it should be split evenly in half and then this other data set is going to create this cars and car score data set. So you'll see here, one of them, both of them should have 214 because I put a 0.5 sample rate. And you'll see here, this one has all zeros and the other one has all ones. Pretty straightforward, nothing too complicated there. This next step I'm gonna be doing is where we're actually gonna be developing the model. So here I have the different variables I'll be using. There's different continuous variables, explanatory variables I'm going to be using. Engine size, uh, cylinders, horsepower, miles miles per gallon, city. I could have, could have included a bunch more. And I have categorical variables like the origin, type, drivetrain, a number of different variables that you can see. I'm going to be using the work.cars data. I'm going to be including all the plots. You'll see all the categorical variables including my model that I'll be including, which includes all the category variables and all the interval variables I included, the, the how I'm going to select the model, as well step uh, the model selection, and as well which which data I'm going to be using to help assess which one I'm going to be picking. And then here I'm going to partition the data set. 25% uh, of the data is going to go to test. 25% is going to go to validate. Even though technically I'm not using tests, just good to include. And then I'm going to output and store my my model into this item store called car store that's just stored within the the work library. So let's go ahead and run that. It's a little bit complicated to, to go through and there's actually quite a bit to go through. But if we go through here, you'll see here a bunch of the procedures that were performed, the data set used, the criteria, etc cetera, etc, cetera, and how it's gonna be chosen and how many variables were read and used and then the different values for each of the categorical variables. So let's go ahead and see here. So we'll see here is uh, what ended up happening is that I added these four different explanatory variables in addition to the intercept. And as well, you can see here that the SPC on the training data set was the goal is to get lower. It was actually lowest when we included all four of these. But you'll see here on the adjusted standard error, which is ASC, that the validation data set, which is actually what we're using to choose the model, only includes horsepower and origin, and actually doesn't include these two additional variables. So that's why it's important to help validate your model, because uh, oftentimes when you do this, it, it will overfit your data set. So that's good. So you'll see here a bunch of different components, and I'm not going to walk through this because it's pretty straightforward. Nothing too complicated it shows you the impact as you add your as your variables in. So if we go down here, you'll see our model, which which we have already known includes intercept, origin, horsepower, which is the same thing of the optimal model based off of the validation data set ASE measure. You'll see everything like the F value, mean square, sum of squares, as well. You'll see the R R squared adjusted R squared, and as well the AIC. SBC, ASC, etc., cetera, etc., cetera. and as well, you'll see the T values for in here. And you can also include the P values, but they're not as important because you've already selected this model. 
So that's good. Uh, and that's useful. Now we have this item store that we're going to be using. And then here, what we're going to use here is proc PLM. And we're going to be restoring the, the item store, which contained the model. And then we'll be scoring based off of the work.carStore data, which is the other data set we had cre created originally. And then we're going to output it to this out.scored. And then we're going to include the code, save the code here. You can obviously save it wherever you want. And then I'm going to run this. And then uh, if I were to show you, you will see here that this item store, this uh, the code was actually stored here. And if I open up, actually open it up here, you'll see the actual code that's actually outputted from the proc PLM, which is really useful because then you can just pass this along to somebody. You'll see the label, what's created, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Uh, really useful, really handy. Okay, that's good. But now let's see our our model in action. So I'm going to create this new data set called uh, data scored updated. Here I'm going to be pulling from the scored data set that was created. See right here. You see the predicted value, and then as so I'm going to take now I have this model that's scored, which is called scored, and I'm going to create this new data set and I'm just going to add a couple more variables in here. Right, so now I have the scored updated, and it will tell me what the variance is between the MSRP and the predicted MSRP, and the percentage change, and then as well I'm going to run this proc means just to actually see what the um, the variance is. So you can see the mean score, the standard deviation, the minimum and and maximum differences. So you can see some of the differences are quite large, but you'll see that the average is actually. Uh, pretty small and obviously I can reduce the number of decimal places here and, and etc cetera, etc cetera. but for now that just gives you an assessment of how well your model scored uh, using actual MSRP and uh, as well your predicted MSRP obviously in in real life you're not gonna have that data set already like you don't you're gonna be use that model to help discover what the MSRP is this is kind of not really the greatest example but it's really easy to understand. You're using all these different components to develop your model and then you're going to use that data when you can obtain the explanatory variables to actually uh, predict your response variable. And common examples would be in fraud where you have all these different components and you're trying to figure out which of these components are relevant to actually assess which ones, which of these uh, who's actually committing fraud in an insurance industries example and then use that uh, sample data set that you obtain and apply that to the larger data set that you have and to help undercover and determine which ones are you actually going to investigate as fraud if you're going to be using a more logistic model as opposed to this uh, this type of model that we've developed. But anyways, if you have any questions or comments, feel free to leave it in the comment section below and I look forward to speaking to you next time. Thank you.